Hello, everyone. Hey. Thank you for attending my session. I hope you enjoy it. So we don't have much time. Let's get started. First, what are we going to talk about? First, I'll have to introduce myself, of course. Then I'm going to break some myths about accessibility. And then I'll explain the four pillars of accessibility. The goal of this session is to have an understanding of accessibility in a way that uh, you know what accessibility is without having to know by heart the WCAG. First about me, um, the father, husband, three-year-old, he's stress testing me all the time, and I've been working as a QA for more than eight years. Um, for the past four and something years, I've been working as a QA domain knowledge lead at FFW, meaning that I'm responsible for our, for the quality assurance growth and process in our European entities. And when we're talking about FFW, um, we create and scale digital experiences that move enterprises and people forward. What this means is, basically, that we've delivered more than 2,000 almost exclusively Drupal solutions to more than 500 clients, and they were happy enough to award us basically every award possible. So, let's start with accessibility. First, of course, we have to start with what is accessibility. So, accessibility, according to Wikipedia, is a design of products, devices, services, vehicles, or environments, so as to be usable by people with disabilities. The concept of accessible design and practice of accessible development ensures both direct and indirect access. Okay, so what stands out here is that accessibility is for people with disabilities, which is true. But not only for people with disabilities, it makes sense to have accessible design. And now we're going to make to uh, bust some myths. Um, in the following slides, I will share with you um, quotes from, based on my experience from the past years, about myths about accessibility. And um, just a warning, the next slide contains a video that might uh, cause seizure in people with photosensitive epilepsy. So, myth number one, accessibility in web is for blind or low vision users. This is the most common misconception that accessibility is for blind and low vision users. While this is true, the spectrum of um, disabilities is much broader. We have to cover motor disabilities, cognitive disabilities, uh, hearing disabilities. And here in example, we have a person who is using mouse stick to navigate and the girl on the bottom is uh, a deaf person who requires subtitles to uh, see the video. And now I'll play the video that I was talking about. Uh, this video is from Pokemon and it's known, known as the Pokemon Shock from Japan and it has sent 700 kids to a uh, hospital due to the seizures caused by this uh, flickering light. So, long story short, accessibility is not for blind or low visual, vision people only. Myth number two, accessibility is for people with disabilities only. As we've mentioned, accessibility is created for people with disabilities, yes. But if you have to push a stroller on a staircase, you can't, right? If you have to watch a video in an extremely noisy environment, you can't. You need subtitles or a transcript. When you're looking at your phone and directs and light, something that we do pretty often, you know that it's hard to read, right? So uh, what this means is that if you have a great uh, color contrast, at the end of the day, you'll be able to look at your phone, even in direct sunlight, and read it. So there are temporary disabilities and um, situational limitations that uh, help you benefit from accessibility, even though if you don't have a disability right now. So accessibility is for people with disabilities only is wrong. Next myth, accessibility makes websites less visually appealing. So here I have I recorded a video from a website, and you can see that it looks, first looks good in both in, in color and in the black and white, meaning that uh, it's perceivable uh, from people with uh, low vision as, as well. But it's not only that. Uh, accessibility, a huge part of it is actually under the hood. It's not something that we can see right here. 
it's in the HTML. So for the end user, making a website accessible is not making it look bad, it's making it look either this equally good, but making it more usable in more conditions. So the next method, accessibility is too expensive and time consuming. This can be true if um, you, you started thinking on accessibility before your go live date. <laughs> and this is uh, something uh, that happens eventually. But if you are planning uh, f for accessibility, if you have accessibility in mind from the planning phase, and uh, in each iteration you do accessibility testing from the designs, implementation and everything, it does not increase the cost of accessibility of uh, development and it's not that time consuming. And what's time consuming and expensive are lawsuits. So if you have to pay lawyers, it will cost you more than implementing accessibility, especially if you start from the beginning. Next myth is accessibility is only necessary for large organizations and, or government websites. So the laws are constantly changing and more and more uh, types of businesses uh, around the world have to be accessible. Um, depending on your region, your country, uh, different laws apply, okay? But uh, nevertheless, more and more laws are getting, um, are taking place right now that are enforcing accessibility, meaning that even though today you might uh, not be obliged to uh, by law, it doesn't mean that in a year you don't have to, uh, your site shouldn't be accessible. But even if you don't have to be accessible by law, why you should do it? Well, first we have the ethical responsibility. Internet is the place uh, that solves a lot of the problems. Uh, if you are a person with disability and you have to do something like buy groceries, it might take you hours to go to actual physical store and purchase them. But if you can order them online and have them uh, brought to you next to your door in a matter of minutes, this will help you a lot. This will in improve your lifestyle. And uh, also, there are, let's say, if you are a fan of something like ornithology or something like that, good luck finding magazines in Braille alphabet. You need to find a website to get, gather your information, to have a hobby, to live a normal life. So the ethical responsibility is number one. Then we have the increased reach. Accessible websites um, are ranked higher by the search engines. So when your site is accessible, you actually reach broader audience. And by doing so, you have more customers, which makes the, the business decision of having an accessible website to uh, investing in it uh, easier to, from the stakeholders to buy. And last but not least, we have the positive brand image. You want to be one of those websites who are accessible. You don't want to be one of those websites who don't care about people. So we were talking about myths and the importance of accessibility. Now we're going to talk about the compliance. The compliance is structured in WCAG by W3C, which stands for Web Content Accessibility Guidelines by World Wide Web Consortium. Uh, they are split in three categories, uh, three levels. Level A, double and triple A. Level A being the lowest and level triple A being the highest. So in most countries around the world, um, the standard level of accessibility that is typically recommended is double A for most of the uh, businesses. And triple A is needed only for government websites and websites that are expected to have a, a big amount of um, people with disabilities visiting them. In, inside WCAG, uh, the, fo the four principal lives, as I called them before, the four pillars of accessibility. They are perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. You can remember them by the word it create, they create, uh, poor. So now we'll go through each and one of those principles, and I'll try to explain their concept so you, you'll be able to understand accessibility without knowing accessibility. 
First, we have perceivable. Uh, perceivable is for the, stands for the biological way we gather information, sight, sound, smell, and taste and touch. For the sake of web, we skip the smelling and tasting, um, and we leave the rest. So, for easier understanding, we can think of that we lack one of the other senses. So, in example, if you are not able to see, you should be able to hear everything. So, if you have a video, in example, um, or an image, or something like that, you should be able to hear what this video is about or what this image uh, has in it, right? If uh, you're a deaf person, this means that uh, you should be able to see everything. So, if there is some audio or some video, there should be a transcript describing everything that uh, is taking place right now. Um, so, you should, in Percival, basically, you should think of how people are perceiving information and provide different ways of, uh, uh, at least two ways, of, of, um, to, from them to ob obtain that information. Then we have operable. So in Percival, we were gathering information. Operable, in operable, we're inputting information. So here, um, we, we should be able to use every website in every, with every uh, technology possible. All types of pointers, uh, voice recognition, keyboard only, and uh, everything that you can imagine. So, I'll give you a couple of examples for operable. The first one is about the smallest thing in the world, which is the close start button. Um, in the new WCG 2.2, uh, there is um, a success criteria that says that it should be no less than 24 by 24 pixels if we want for our website to be accessible. So you can imagine the, the person from the first slides who is using mouse sticks uh, to, mouse stick to find and close this button, it would be a nightmare. Also, uh, being that small, for, for a person with low vision to actually find it, again, a complete nightmare. Then we have the focus. If you're operating the website using the tab button, the tabulation, um, you should be able to see where you're currently at because otherwise you would not know uh, which element has the focus or when you click enter, what will happen. So it's simple as that. This blue outline is what the focus is. Then we have the time. Again, in order to operate a website, people with uh, disabilities, elderly people, they require more time. So we, don't, we should not time box some functionality. We should not um, ask the, a person to uh, make a timed keystrokes in order to achieve something, right? We should just leave them work with their website at their own pace. Next one, we have understandable. Understandable basically means is that we should not reinvent the wheel. There are good practices around the world that most of the big sites are following, and we should implement them. Uh, consistency and predictability. This is, those two words are really strong and they work really well. If you open a website for a first time, you'll be able to quickly navigate through it if it's done in the proper way. It will be easier for you to understand it. This is the way that we should build our websites in an understandable way. I'll give you a couple of more examples about understandable. First one is the language. Um, I'll be honest with you, if this gift here might have been omelette du fromage, uh, but after the, the uh, session before that, I've removed it. But, so, um, about the language. It's one line in the HTML code to say what's, the, what's your website language. If you don't have it, the, def the website will be uh, read in the assistive technology default uh, fallback language. And if they don't match, this, this website will become unusable for that user. Also, if you're expecting that a lot of people will be using your website who are not um, proficient in that language, you might skip 
the terminology, the high level Shakespeare wording and stuff like that. You can keep it simple so everyone can understand everything. This is one of my favorites. It's the error prevention and error correction. Not sure if you can actually see it. Um, the error message states this value should not be no. So here we have multiple issues. First one is what is this? Uh, and here we can input some JavaScript jokes, but we'll skip that. But so we, we're referring to this field, which is marked in red. Okay, but if the person who is uh, using the website is colorblind, they would not know that this field is actually marked in red. So instead of this field, we should say the, the name of the field. Then we have, it should not be no. Well, no is kind of a technical term. Maybe we should use the word empty. Then we have the category with the red asterisk, which is the symbol of mandatory, right? We know it, but not everyone knows the symbols. So if we simply use a help text that says this field is mandatory, we would be doing an error prevention. And this would not have happened. And the last one from our four pillars is robust. Robust basically means semantically correct HTML. Here I have listed um, most of the things that you can consider. Have a meaningful title, use landmarks, headings should be used as such, etc., etc. Of course, together with the correct HTML, we should use ARIA attributes. So, we cannot test every device. Robust means that we should provide similar uh, experience on all of the devices, all readers, all browsers, everything. But we cannot test them. I've been working as a QA, as I've mentioned, for more than eight years. I know how time consuming is uh, cross device testing. So what we can do is we can try to make sure that we've built everything the best way possible, following the good practices, using uh, stat static code analysis for the HTML, et cetera, et cetera. So at the end of the day, we should expect if we've done everything the right way, that it will be working for um, for every browser and every device. And if it is not working, this means that we either, if it's not working for one device, this means that it's probably the problem with the device and not with us. I mean, if it's working for everyone else. And for conclusion, I hope that you've gathered enough information about accessibility, its importance for everyone, not just people with disabilities. Um, and I hope you'll get on, on the boat with me <laughs> and start making our websites more accessible. Thank you.